Yo, what's up guys? Today's video is gonna be a review of the Zowie 360 Hertz monitor. I'm gonna be going over everything with you guys, all the specs, all the features, and how it feels to actually use it. This isn't gonna be a review with any fancy B-roll. It's just gonna be my honest opinion from a dude who plays a lot of games at a pretty high level, but we do have a lot to cover, so let's get right into it. So real quick, I just wanna go over specs. It is gonna be a 24 and a half inch wide monitor. It is 1080p, which might be a downside for some people, but I'll talk about that a little bit later. It's 360 Hertz, so you're getting a top of the line refresh rate. But really the main selling point of this monitor is going to be the DIAC technology. If you guys don't know what DIAC is, it's actually Zowie's own take on the black frame insertion technology. And this helps to cut down on motion blur and improve clarity a ton. And it makes such a big difference in Apex. This monitor is also equipped with a TN panel. They call it their own fast TN. And coming from an IPS monitor, the colors aren't as good, but you can get them pretty close. Viewing angles also aren't going to be as good. But if all you're doing is gaming on this monitor, then that's not going to be an issue at all. It also has its own customizable overdrive settings, so you can dial them in exactly how you want. It also does come with their updated stand which is really slim and it won't get in the way of your mouse pad or keyboard or anything like normal monitor stands might but as you can see i have mine mounted on an arm so there's no need for that but the stand it comes with is really good it also comes with zowie's own s switch and this just makes it really easy to change between different profiles and also just access the menu really quick with the press of a button and you can change all the settings from right here it's a really convenient device that i wish more monitors came with this monitor also features a black equalizer which lets you brighten up a lot of those shadows and dark areas in game and makes it a lot easier to see things this monitor is also compatible with zowie's setting the share utility and it makes it super easy to import settings from any of your favorite players but now that we kind of talked about the specs and everything the monitor comes with i just want to show you guys the menu and all of its features real quick and it comes equipped with a bunch of different presets but i'll share my settings with you guys in a second on the back of the monitor there is a little joystick which makes it super easy to navigate the menu coming from the acer 390 hertz this was a huge upgrade here are all the different preset modes i have a custom fps1 mode on the color settings you can change your black equalizer you have a color vibrant setting you have a low blue light setting in case you do want to filter out some of that blue light you have customized gamma you can customize your color temperature you have your diac options you know there's premium high and off custom brightness contrast sharpness which is a really good feature i like the way that zowie does their sharpness better than any other monitor i've tried and this is your customizable overdrive settings but real quick before i go into all of my settings with you guys i just want to explain what diac is a little bit because it is such a big feature of this monitor so for diac i keep it on premium this is definitely the best option high isn't bad but premium is just so much better i'll put some examples up on the screen so that you guys can see it there's just so much more clarity and high motion scenarios and it's an even bigger difference when you use it in person comparing this to my old acer 390 hertz monitor which also has black frame insertion the way that zowie does it is just miles ahead you know with the acer monitor and every single other monitor that has black frame insertion there's a big hit to brightness whenever you turn it on and for me personally it made the monitor unusable it was just so dark and it made things hard to see but that's not a problem with the zowie at all there's even a special tool that you can use to make the brightness even higher but honestly you don't really need that just because it already looks so bright but now i'll explain the custom overdrive or ama so what over overdrive does on a monitor is that it overclocks the pixels to get better response times but usually the higher you go with this there is a trade-off you can get higher amounts of inverse ghosting and that can make the image just look really poor so in the settings menu if you come down to ama there is the default off high and premium settings but there's also this customized one which you can go in and change it to your liking now i like to play on 15 this does give me a very small amount of inverse ghosting but it's not too bad and i do get very good response times with this optimum tech did some really good testing which i don't have access to those tools i don't have a high speed camera or anything but i'll show you guys that he found 12 to be the best compromise between input lag and ghosting so i prefer to keep it somewhere around there like i said i usually play on 15 black equalizer like i said before it really brightens up those shadows in game i keep mine on 13 you get a pretty good boost in the shadows but it also doesn't make your game look too washed out that can be a problem if you go too high and also just the way that zowie does their black equalizer compared to other monitors it looks so much better on my acer 390 hertz yeah it would brighten up some of the shadows but it would also just look very washed out and ugly color vibrance i like to keep mine on 15 when I'm playing. If I'm just desktop browsing, I keep it on 10. I really enjoy those vivid colors that it gives me. For low blue light, I just keep this on zero, but you can turn it up to about three or four before you notice a difference in the colors. For gamma, I just keep mine set to three. I feel like this is the best option. For color temperature, this is one that I struggled with for a long time because being a TN panel coming from an IPS, the colors just look pretty bad to me at first, but after a lot of testing and messing around with it a bunch, I found this to look the best for me. My red is set to 88, green is 90, and blue is 100. But now to the picture settings, obviously diag like I said before, I like to keep it on premium just to give me the maximum clarity that I can get on this monitor. Brightness, I turn this up to 90 a little bit just because I feel like out of the box, this monitor is a little bit dark, especially coming from a very, very bright IPS panel. I like to have my monitors a little bit brighter. So 90 is pretty good. Contrast, I just keep it on 50. Now sharpness, I crank this all the way up when I'm gaming to 10, but for desktop browsing, I usually keep it on six or seven. And this plus Diac just improves clarity so much, especially in games when you're playing with lower resolutions. This sharpness is a lifesaver. Having an extra sharpness without adding 
any sort of extra input delay is a huge bonus for this monitor. And for AMA, like I said before, I play in 15. I'd recommend keeping it somewhere around 12. But if you guys do want the absolute fastest response times, you can crank it up all the way up to premium, but you will get a decent amount of inverse ghosting. But if that's not something you care about, then setting this to premium will give you the absolute fastest response times that you can get. So now that we kind of talked about the monitor and the settings and all the features, I just want to share with you guys kind of my overall thoughts after using this monitor for about a month or so. I've tried a few different monitors. I've had an Asus 144 Hertz, Asus 240 Hertz, and then the Acer 390 Hertz. And out of all of them, this is definitely the best one that I've used. Sure, you may not get those really vibrant and bright colors like you do with an IPS panel, although you can get pretty close with a little bit of tweaking. The motion clarity that you get with this monitor is just insane. It's really unmatched. You know, in very fast games like Apex and Overwatch, which I play a decent amount of, that extra clarity when targets are moving really fast and you're trying to track and flick, it's just so much easier to see them and actually be able to aim at it. I just really can't put into words how it feels, but the extremely fast response times and insane motion clarity just actually makes it feel like you're in the game. I know that might sound really crazy, but if you tried this monitor, you probably know what I'm talking about. I know I'm really hyping it up a lot, but it is just so good. I know I've talked a little bit about response times and now I'll just put those numbers up on the screen for you. I don't have any access to the tools I need to test this myself, but I'll put some results up from a few different reviews. Now, as you can see, it has some of the best response times out of any monitor available right now. Couple that with all the other settings you get with this monitor, and it just makes for a truly amazing competitive gaming experience. And that is really where this monitor shines is in competitive gaming. If you're doing things like editing or you're just a casual gamer who really wants to focus on visuals, then maybe a 1440p monitor might be better for you. I know 1440p is becoming popular, especially for BRs where you need to see things at a distance, but seeing things at a distance was never really a problem for me with this monitor. Just because of that extra clarity, the smoothness, and also the sharpness, it just really brings you a super clear image. And as far as colors go, they aren't too bad. Now they might not be on the level of IPS panels, but with a little bit of tweaking, you can get it very close. But yeah, just to kind of wrap it up overall, I do think that this is the best monitor that you can get for gaming specifically right now. It does come in at $600, which is pretty steep. But if you're someone who's looking for the absolute best of the best, this is going to be it right here. If you guys have any questions about this monitor, please do leave them in the comments down below. I'll be trying to answer as much of them as I can. If you guys enjoyed the video, remember to leave a like and a comment and don't forget to subscribe. I have a lot more Apex tips and tricks videos and also some reviews that I'm planning in the future. And you guys don't want to miss that. But that's going to be it for me. I really hope you guys enjoyed the video. And I hope you have a great rest of your day. Peace.